We have a view, but it's showing us an error because we're asking it to render a template that does not exist. Let's fix that. If we look at this error message, we can see a few things that are interesting. First, in the traceback, we can see the line causing the error is line 5 in views.py. We already knew that, but sometimes you'll see the screen and you don't know why. When you're in that situation, check out this option to show the local variables. It can give you valuable insight on how to fix your unexpected problem. Just above this, in the template loader postmortem, you'll see that Django tried to load the templates from those folders. Django knows about the admin interface, but there's no template there with the right name. It also knows about the built-in authentication, but it also doesn't have the right template. But here, this last line is our newly created app. This is the one we care about. You see, it's looking for a folder in our Blat app called Templates, and in there, a folder called Blat, which contains a file called home.html. We didn't have to tell it to load a template file from the Blat subfolder, but it's a good idea to namespace your template in some way. That way, you avoid naming collisions when your projects grow bigger into multiple apps. Another thing I'd like to point out is the name of the template. It's not coincidental that I had us name that file with a .html extension. The fact is, Django's built-in template system is just HTML files with a few special codes intermixed. I think this is a great feature because it means that you don't have to learn a special language to create templates. That said, there are other template systems available for Django. Some use XML and XSLT, and others provide interesting options. There are some that are compatible with multiple programming languages, and you're welcome to use whichever you like. Let's open our Blat app and create a folder called Templates, and inside of it, create a folder called Blat. This is where we'll keep our template. Now inside that folder, let's create a file called home.html. For our first test, let's keep it very simple. We'll just put the words hello world in there. Save this, now refresh our browser window. Voila! We now have something useful. Not that useful though. Notice in our code we're passing this third parameter through a dictionary with a single key called message. This is data that we'll expose to our template. Let's put that to use. In our HTML file, delete hello world and instead use a double stash tag with the word message in it. Save that, and when we refresh, we see our message. We didn't see much change, so let's update our view to ensure it worked. We'll replace the value of the message key with something unique. Let's put in there, rapid Django. Now refresh and you should see our change. If we switch over to the Django docs, we'll see that there are a lot of things we can do. The docs that are most interesting to us are called for designers because it focuses mostly on the different kinds of tags we can use. We'll go through the most common items here, but I strongly suggest spending some more time reading through this in order to take advantage of the full power available to you. Variables are the most common kinds of template tags. We've already used one. If our variable was a dictionary or object, we can use its keys with a dot like this, message.text. Filters let us modify our variables. For example, Let's take our message and make it uppercase with a pipe. We can use the word upper to do that. You'll also use tags, which are a bit more intelligent than a variable. Instead of a double stash, you'll use a stash and percent sign. A great example is the if statement. You can check if a variable is true, and if so, do something. Its syntax is like this, if message, then do something. For example, we can choose to display the message if it exists, and if not, use the else tag to display something by default. We can also use filters here. For example, if we had an option, we could check its length, and if so, do something. If we head back to the docs, you'll see here a list of all the built-in tags and filters. This is a very handy reference. A lot of Django apps are built just like we're doing here. We create HTML templates, we load them using views, and we pass data into the templates using this context variable. We can do database queries, fetch information from files, or the internet. The choices are endless. However, there are a few patterns that are extremely common. So common, in fact, that Django has built-in views to do what you need without writing any Python code. These are called generic views and are the topic of the next video.